Under the Universal Declaration of Rights, it says that everyone's free to have their religion or not to have the religion and to change their religion. Now, understand that God has given us free will, and I think the Muslims believe that. If that is the case, then why is it that some Muslim theologians and imams say that if someone changes their religion from Islam to any other religion, it doesn't have to be Christian, any religion, they have the right to execute them. Uh, it's against human rights, it's against the universal declaration of rights, against what God has told us that we've got free will. So I cannot understand why um, the, the theologian. Now the second question is a, a clarification. I was listening to an imam on the internet and he was saying that at the end times there will be the army of the Christians and the army of the Muslims and they will fight each other. And Dachau will come down who will be Jewish and most of his followers will be Jewish right and he will bring this this trust and discord within the world but then jesus christ will come back he will kill dajjal and jesus christ will be a muslim he'll come back as a muslim kill dajjal and then everyone or the christians anyone else who survived the muslim uh, onslaught will become muslim now i wonder if that's true that this Omar said do muslims believe this <laughs> and i mean i find it very difficult to put that there. and the other one for if I may, is I think if atheists gain, that they can be just as intolerant as some Christ, uh, Christians. And the example of the Soviet, the Soviet Union, atheists gained control of the Soviet Union. And what did they do? They tore down the churches, they imprisoned um, priests, they made sure that people try not to believe. That, that, and so they can, if they get power as atheists, they can be just as intolerant. I wonder if you would agree with that. Okay, so I'll just ask our speakers to answer in turn. So we start. Thanks for the questions. Um, with regards to the first issue, um, you are right that in jurisprudence there is a law that um, if you are to convert from Muslim to another religion, there can be a penalty involved, and one is execution. But one thing um, which I just wanted to tell you is that. In the Muslim world at this very moment, and especially in the last 20 years, this very rule is being debated um, by traditional and reformist scholars. It, it was a rule which was there a long time before, but not, not because of freedom of religion, but because of political reasons, that you were trying to be a covert spy, and you were saying, I'm Muslim, but really I'm a Jew or Christian, whatever religion, and you're then trying to create discord in the ummah, the nation. So the, 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 rule, what, the law was not actually about freedom of religion, it was about politics. What's actually happened is that this law just remained and people have associated it with freedom of religion, but it's not. With regards to freedom of religion, um, all Muslims believe, yes, there's no compulsion religion. With regards to the law, what's happening at the moment is because of the confusion, as well as the fact that now it is being associated with freedom of religion, a number of scholars like Mohsin Kadivar and Abdullah Naim and many others are saying this is absolutely wrong. So I do sympathize and I do in some respects agree with you. Um, that actually the law should be clarified, removed, or reinterpreted. So that's my answer. Um, second is with regards to the Dajjal. That, that particular belief about army of Christians and army of, of Muslims and the Dajjal being a Jew, uh, to me that seems very exaggerated and that's not in the Hadith. I know both Shia and Sunnis believe in this person called the Dajjal, somebody that's going to cause discord, or somebody that's going to lead people away, but I don't think there's any such thing that he's going to be a Jew in Hadith or anything. He's just going to be somebody that will pull humanity away from morality to immorality. That's one thing. With regards to the fact that everybody who becomes Muslim know, um, the people of the book, that is Jews and Christians and any others, are always respected. So uh, that has always been the case anyway, even when the Prophet was there in Mecca and Medina. So I, there is no such thing that they just suddenly convert to Muslim. The ama basic idea is that people would like, would like to submit to God and, and be moral and, and that should come under the guidance of the coming Imam, whoever that is. But that's, that's the belief I'm giving in the narrations. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, but, but I must make a distinction. And there's a distinction between an alim and uh, an Imam. When you say alim is a scholar that is professor, yes? 
And somebody that speaks in university, or I take university or academia very seriously, means I would do my research. Somebody in the local imam is just a preacher, just like you have in a synagogue or church or whatever, and that person is not necessarily professorial. And that's always the problem. And that's the problem that Muslims face, and even when I've attended other uh, uh, places of worship, there's the same problems which face. So I don't think that you can take that as gospel. Yeah? I mean, I can even give you references if you wish. But anyway. <laughs>